Good morning, YouTubers. T-Square with T-Square Talk. So I wanted to do a talk today about gold and silver. I was actually just reading an article um, that kind of talked a little bit about what might be in store for us in 2020. And I, I kind of found it interesting. So I kind of wanted to jump over and talk about it a little bit. Now, one of the main reasons um, with, is with the gold and silver ratio being as high as it is right now, um, we're talking basically, as you can see in the chart, 125 to one. Um, that number is astronomical compared to the chart that we've seen over the last 100 years. Um, as you can see, looking at the chart, we've never experienced in the history of gold, money, silver, we've never experienced um, this high of a ratio. So I kind of found that interesting. And with that being said, I wanted to jump over, do a little bit of the research that I normally do on this topic and see if 2020 is going to be the year for silver. Because as history shows us, when that gold to silver ratio starts getting pushed up, usually that's a sign for a really awesome year for silver and an opportunity to make a lot of money off silver. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not licensed to give financial information. However, this is my opinion, and I wanted to show you guys some of the research that I've been looking at, and that way you can kind of make your own judgments and see if you kind of agree with what I'm saying. So let's jump over real quick and get started. Now, if you're not already uh, subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We are trying to grow the channel, and we are currently sitting on 4,040 subs as of shooting this video. Um, we are trying to grow, so hit that sub subscribe if you enjoyed the video and get more great videos. Also, if you want, you can follow us on Instagram. We're fairly newer to Instagram. We're currently sitting at 2,883 followers on Instagram. Um, now, with that all being said, the reason that this topic came up for me today is because I had seen this article article can silver price deliver in 2020 and my thoughts have been um, we're, we're due for a breakout in silver however every once in a while I like to re-encourage myself by reading what's going on and kind of staying up on the markets because when the markets do turn they turn rather fast um, no matter what type of investment you're in um, it, it doesn't take long for things to turn as you can see in the stock market right now um, with its drastic rate drops and it's just falling I mean it's like crashing and burning um, but with that being said let's jump over and we'll take a quick look at a couple other things so right here for those of you that don't know what the gold silver ratio is the definition of the gold to silver ratio is simply the amount of silver that it takes to purchase one ounce of gold. If the ratio is 25 to 1, that means the current price, you can purchase one ounce of gold for 25 ounces of silver. Now with that being said, basically that would be saying that if gold was $100, silver would be $4. That's 25 to 1. So the question is, what is the price of silver though right now because it's not four dollars so the current price as of shooting this video right now silver is at fourteen dollars and gold is sitting at fifteen hundred and ninety so what that means is the gold to silver ratio as of filming this video is basically a hundred and fourteen to one now that's down slightly as you can see on the 30-day chart right here it's down slightly because it actually worked its way up to 125 but is 125 high a lot of people don't know um, they're they might be new to this and so they may not realize whether that's high well when you look at the chart for the last hundred years you can see that it is clearly way above any other situation that we've seen you know, we've had a 99 to 1 in 1991. We had a 97 to 1 in 1941. Now, generally, when this happens, this is this starts, it means times are really, essentially, they've been good. And as silver, the ratio is so far up, 
101, 101, 115 to 1. Some people will say that it cycles. And, and I believe it does cycle. And basically that cycle is because the gold is priced so high in compared to the silver price that people all of a sudden start shifting their investments over to silver. They start wanting to buy silver. And when that happens, that starts to drop the ratio. So basically, if you were, if you had, let's say, 100 ounces of silver in 1941, and then you decided to trade it to gold in 1968, you would have gotten 20, it, it, five extra ounces of gold. So if you had held gold up here, it's one ounce of gold. And if you hold it down here, it's still one ounce of gold. However, if you held silver here, it's 100, but then when you come down here, if you decide to convert it over to the gold at that point, you basically would have five ounces of gold. You convert it over to five. So basically you made five times your money. Now, this can happen really rapidly, these changes. As you can see like right here, a 67 to 43. Um, but what this is, is not just about swapping out gold and silver and waiting this is actually a reflection of the silver price basically moving up or the gold price moving down now in today's market I don't believe that the gold price is gonna come too far down compared to where it is um, you so with that being said now let's jump over here now I was curious after I had read that you know I, I never actually had looked what is it in the earth so when you look up in the earth, um, basically the ratio of silver to gold in the earth's crust is estimated to be 17.5 to 1. So basically we can say 18 to 1 for easy math. Um, 18 to 1. Well, clearly the ratio is nowhere near 18 to 1. I mean, in fact, it's 115 to 1. So that leads me to believe that that's a little out of whack. Now, the next thing I wondered, because I wanted to double check this myself, and I said, well, how much gold did we actually mine last year? That came up to 3,300 metric tons. Now, that sounded like a lot at first. Uh, I was like, I wonder how much that is. Uh, so I jumped over, and I wanted to compare it to silver. So when I did that, I ended up getting 27 silver last year was mined. 27,000 metric tons. Now, right off when I did the math, I did the math and I got 8.2. So basically, I divided the amount of mined gold last year by the amount of mined silver. And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of other factors in there. Maybe that ratio still, there could have been mistakes in the numbers. There could have been a lot of different stuff that played out. So I, I wanted to keep looking around and seeing, you know, just different stuff. And here's what came to my attention. So global, global silver production mining came from 27 of the 27,000 metric tons in 2018. The world's largest silver producers were Mexico is number one. And then after that, we have Peru, China, Poland, and Chile are the next largest ones. Now, there's something I found interesting as I read them. Um, a lot of people know right now um, a lot of stuff is closing down. I've been doing a whole lot more streams right now um, and videos, putting them up on the Internet to talk to people to get different stuff about financing, prepping, um, cooking all kinds of different topics and the reason I'm doing that is because I have so much extra time on my hands because everything is closing down um, and the reason I mention that is because a lot of the mines we're starting to see mines close down for safety basically because they don't want the employers to be forced to come to work and then possibly catch the coronavirus and then basically be have possibly pending lawsuits against companies. Um, so just out of safety concerns, they're closing down. So that's gonna have a huge impact on supply, on the supply side. At a time when silver is kind of already strapped right now, in my opinion, and I'm gonna say why here in a little bit. 
So the next thing I wanted to know is, you know, where where do we use a lot of our silver? Um, so a lot of the silver gets used for electronic, uh, electrical components, electronics, coins, and metals. Um, so a lot of you guys that are coin collectors, I, I have a large following on coin collecting. Um, photography, jewelry, and silverware um, are the big industries. Now I know at times some of these may fall, some of them may grow. Um, like right now, I believe a lot of people are trying to buy silver coins because the silver price is, in my opinion, too low. Um, but that's a story for a whole nother video. Um, and I realize electronics may be dying down a little bit. Um, there's less building, manufacturing, that type of stuff. Um, but then the next question I, I started kind of shifting to was, well, how much of the silver do we actually recycle? Now, basically, the only numbers that I could find on recycling silver is about 32% is estimated recycling. So that means that the stuff that's silverware or old items that people don't want, they do bring it into metals dealers, they sell it, and then it does get melted down and recycled into other stuff. Um, but then I kind of got wondering, well, what the bulk, the really bulk of demand where does that all come from? You know, I, I want to narrow this down even more to try to put specific numbers in place. Now, a lot of the stuff, the demand for silver, obviously jewelry, everybody is into jewelry. Um, it's, a, it's a hot item. Um, industrial, which clearly is going to be down right now with everything going on. They're going to be manufacturing less, or so we think, but we're going to come back to that in just a minute. It will be down in some cases. However, there may be some industries that are really about ready to pick up um, when it comes to silver. Now, coins and bars, um, when reading this, it tells you basically with the cryptocurrency exploding, um, that's kind of take a lot of, of the money that people would have, because people that are into cryptos are kind of anti-dollar. They're, they're not really big on investing in the dollar. They want to put their money into something else. Um, so whether that's silver or gold, a lot of money did move to cryptocurrencies when this was written in 2017 because that was a really hot time. So that led me to jump over to what's going on in the crypto markets. Um, the crypto markets, I've been following the big 50 um, more recently lately. These are all your top 50 right now. Um, actually, I'm sorry, top 100. Oh, even more, I don't know. But needless to say, I'm only worried about the top ones. I guess it goes all the way down. Um, so these are your big uh, cryptocurrencies. However, if we look at a chart, obviously Bitcoin, everybody's heard of Bitcoin. It's the number one. You know, when they wrote that article in 2017, you can look right here. It was a Bitcoin frenzy. Everybody was getting into the currency markets. However, after this huge fall in cryptocurrencies, a lot of people are left sour on this. Unless they're doing day trading from one day to the next, you know, they're buying a high, they're selling a low, buying a high, selling on, you know, back and forth. They're buying, they're trying to buy the lows, sell the highs. However, after this huge drop, it's kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. So I, I'm not really putting a whole lot of stock in the um, red hot cryptocurrency is stealing a lot of the money. So I would believe that more people are buying and some, more people are buying the coins and bars, and that's because if you look on Provident Metals or AppMax or J, JM Bullion or any of these um, coin companies that are selling coins. They are selling them for obscene premiums. I mean, I'm seeing Eagles sell $12 over spot. You can check that on eBay. Um, anywhere that you buy or have bought any kind of coins from, you'll see that the price is not really $14. Now, I understand there's going to be a premium, but some of these premiums are insane. Um, so I'm thinking that with the mines closing now, we're going to see silver start jumping. With more people, because the economy's been slipping, with more people noticing that slip, they're going to start buying coins and bars. 
even at some of these high premiums. I don't like buying at high premiums um, because I, I like buying at, I'd rather see silver at 20 and buy at 22 than see silver at 14 and buy at 22. It's just easier in my mind to grasp that difference in price. So I've slowed down on a lot of buying temporarily. Um, I do open up packages that I've had that I bought before this huge fall. If I find good deals, I do pick them up. Um, but that still leaves the other two, um, jewelry. People are still going to buy jewelry. If you're getting married, if, if it's your wife's birthday, your girlfriend's birthday, or you just want something nice, some bling bling, um, you're still going to buy jewelry. Even with the economy slowing, silver is not that expensive that people are not going to buy silver jewelry. So I, I would put the jewelry pretty much in the same category, and I would also put the coins in the bars at an increased category. So now the question comes up for industry. So the next thing I had to know, I had to know what do we use a lot of the silver on? What, what industries do we use? So I found this 101 uses for silver. Um, and there are a ton of stuff, everything from treatment of warts and corns to um, conjunctivitis to surgical masks. Now this one drew my attention right off, number six. And I've mentioned this before in other videos, um, 3D silver mash to aid in the support, um, loosely woven sheets made in either 3D gold or 3D silver. Now, if, you, if they do the same, people are going to get the silver. Um, and as I kept scrolling down, I mean, some of the uses are just not really going to change. You know, if you use it for hospital t water, tap water filters, you're still going to be, in fact, you're probably even going to use it even more because hospitals are getting filled up with everything that's going on right now. Um, a lot of sterilization we use it for. Um, they're needing to do a lot of that to fight E. coli. Um, when it comes to silver, there's so many uses in the medical field that only silver works. Um... I, I really foresee this just getting ready to blow up. Now, I know there may be some items that um, will slow down. Maybe less people will buy electronic computers or fancy gadgets. Um, but because the price is so minuscule for the silver right now, companies are still, if they need silver, they're still going to buy it. Um, I, I really did find it interesting um, with the masks because masks are one of the hot topics right now. Um, companies can't get them. People can't get them. They're such high demand. And the question comes up, well, a lot of them come from China, so that's what's going on with that case. However, it's still creating an obscene amount of demands on the masks. And a lot of these products are still... Um, getting kind of bought up even with the downed economy so I, I found this one interesting door handles um, basically the silver will kill the bacteria um, when you touch the door handle because right now everybody's talking about door handles when you go somewhere you don't want to be um, touching door handles I always have gloves on if I leave my house but I am quarantined right now so I'm not really going anywhere because of that so um, and then you just scroll through and tons and tons and tons of different stuff. So that leads me to believe that a lot of, um, silver is just going to really explode in 2020. Um, and people that are not in it are going to have a hard time getting in it as it's moving up fast because we're already seeing the demand in the coin and bullion market it's not equaling the paper price the premium is the price over the coin that you pay so when anything when it comes to paper I mean they can push the paper price down if you short it um, however in the real world when you want real silver some people aren't willing to to basically buy paper contracts 
if they even have the ability to. Most people don't have the ability to, but in some cases, the people that do have the ability to buy the paper contracts, they buy the paper contracts, they lock in their price, they wait their month, and then they claim it. Most people don't even claim it for companies. A lot of people, they'll put in the order, they'll buy it, then it goes up to $16, say, that's $2 profit on every contract share they bought, and they just take their profits, deposit it in the bank, and move on to the next investment. However, when it explodes, there's only so much silver out there. And if mines start slowing down, we could see drastic drops in the mining, which this, the short answer is price solves everything. And it's true, price does solve everything because even someone like me that is a firm believer in silver, I have a dollar figure. I have a dollar figure that is my price that I've bought, and I have a dollar figure that I'll sell. And I have a dollar figure that I'll cash out everything. Um, so with that being said, you know, it's, it's really a golden opportunity for people to get into silver and invest in something real, tangible, that has potentially huge gains. Now, there was one other thing um, that basically, it was an article as I was scrolling around, and it basically stated, um, should silver be worth $144? And what that was explaining was, I don't really think silver should be um, that high right now. However, when you're dealing with the current price of silver, that's obscenely low. Um, I could really, I mean, if you just did an 18 to 1 and compared it to the current gold price, I mean, there's huge, that should be a lot higher or gold should be a lot lower. But I'm not seeing gold go down to what it would have to be to be worth 18 times the price of silver today. So now this this was just the last thing. So so I've already came to my conclusion and then at the very end I always end up just looking up kind of facts on key things that I'm searching. Um, silver gets mentioned in the Bible. I found that interesting because I've actually read a lot of um, scriptures um, from the Bible that pertain to silver. Um, I actually have a denarius. Um, it's kind of interesting. But just a lot of little, you can kind of pause the video and read through all these. A lot of interesting stuff when it comes to silver. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, please go ahead and, and uh, hit me a thumbs up for it. And if you did, that way, and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought, and that way I'll be tempted to do more of these type of videos. Um, like broadcast or podcast um, for you guys. As always, if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a shiny uh, 2020 when it comes to silver. I think, I think a lot of people are going to profit if they're in it. So hopefully you will too. And uh, we'll make some money together. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I hope to see you guys again on T-Square Talk. You guys have a great night. Thanks for watching, everybody.